Hey everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Avernum 2 Crystal Souls. We are still in the Tiger's Den, which is not quite complete, although, quite obviously, we have dealt with the main uh, issue here, the boss himself. And this is probably just some kind of minor side chamber, which, yeah, I don't know. Looking back, it seems pretty obvious. Not only... I mean, I, I guess... I can see how I missed the, the door, but I'm usually pretty paranoid about checking out these, you know, empty or seemingly empty spaces for hidden rooms and, okay, in this case, it was not even that. So you have the doors are open. Um, I guess I'm gonna, I'm gonna check the open room first. Oh, hello. Got a tiny little dragon horde here, or a drake horde, I should say, Suara. Um, hi. Okay, I guess I'm gonna... Take advantage of the fact that we were not in combat mode yet. Alright. Um, I could try and uh, activate my adrenaline rush right away and see. Okay. I got two attacks out of it and that was more than enough to take out that tiny little drake. Almost feel a bit bad. Um... Looking up. Oh, okay, we got a couple more Rakshasi. Well, yeah. Almost a one shot. Very nice. Hmm. I guess you finish off this one and. Oh, sweet. A little up. Yeah. Oh, well, she could have had a uh, haste proc there, but it's not like these enemies are any kind of problem, and I did not mean to pick up whatever junk that was. Whatever, a towel or something, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna pick up these herbs. Always happy to see energetic herbs, which seem to be the most universal, universally um, useful of the herbs. But I'll take them all. Okay, some kind of little library here with Nothing. Um, I'm trying to look out for switches, but I'm not seeing any. What? Oh, okay. Some more money on the floor here. No containers. Still no buttons. Okay. Well, I'll take this and leave your wine here. Not that there is anyone left to drink it, but... Okay, well, that was that. I don't see any buttons, so I guess what's left blank... It's gonna stay that way. Okay, of course this is too far for the pathfinding, maybe. Okay, we can go here. And then leave this way. Alright, that was that. Um, we did have a quest for this place. If I'm not mistaken. The Tiger's Den. Um, Mayor Genevieve. Right. So let's quickly return... Uh, return here and uh, tell her the good news. And then I think we have one more of those little message quests. Uh, oh, she's actually through here. One of those little message quests for the castle. There we go. You tell Mary and Genevieve the tale of your victory over the Rakshasi. I knew when you arrived you would do good things for us. Our south flank is much more secure now, thanks to you. She gives you a, a bow as a reward. Nice. Both storms, okay. Um, how does that compare to a really good bow? Not that favorably. Hmm, 50% bonus. Okay. That means it actually deals 50% more damage than it displays, or is that already taken into account? That's a weird one. I mean, w with spells... I think with spells, uh, when they get upgraded and and say that they get a 20% bonus or something. It does not show... It does not actually show the increased damage. Although I might be wrong. Maybe it does show. Hmm. Because if it actually deals 50% more damage, then it's about as good. If not, even a little bit better. In terms of... Uh, well, both base and max damage. Than the bow of the Deep Woods. Of course, that one does give gymnastics and some extra healing, which I don't necessarily need. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess I can check like this. 
perhaps. 57 to 285. to 285. Okay, so that does not change at all. Maybe that's not simply not based on the weapon's base damage, but on uh, dexterity or some other stat. Maybe bow skill. Or simply level. Who knows? Hmm. I guess I'm gonna give this a try. It seems to be more offensive. Lightning seems decent. 50% chance to add lightning damage. We'll see how much damage that actually deals. Also, uh, I'll take those leather pants. Thank you. But I'm going to hold on to this I mean, the 5% healing are basically not a factor here. Um, gymnastics are nice. Allowing you... Yeah, to sometimes start with more action points. I mean, that's always useful for any class, any, any of our characters. But it's also not a deal-breaker if we have to let that go. Is there... Okay, I guess that guy was in our way. Uh, you leveled up, so you get more strength. That is actually his final regular level up, as far as I'm aware. I think he's going to keep leveling up and gain more health and energy, I guess. Uh, and, I don't know, maybe some other things that just... I guess uh, general hit chance and whatnot does increase with level. But he's only going to get his stats and maybe other... Maybe I'm not even sure about uh, talent points. Or traits, for that matter. Um, but he's going to get s at least stats every five levels from now on. So that's maybe going to happen one more time, considering that there is quite a bit more left, uh, quite a bit more game left in terms of sheer area than there was in Avernum 1 by the time we reached level 30. So we'll see. But I'm basically not expecting to gain anything else much in terms of talents and, and stat ups. Which is fine, you know. Hopefully we'll at least get some more uh, equipment upgrades. That would be nice. Now, if only I knew for sure if I had found a weapon trainer. That is a trainer for melee weapons and or pole weapons. I don't think I have. So these 14 points should be natural points. Whereas I've clearly put uh, some, or bought some training in these three disciplines here. Because the thing is, I'm pretty sure that um, you cannot actually buy... Well, it, it doesn't matter in this case. I assume that trainers for these skills exist, although they might not. I'm, I'm going to look that up, actually, uh, once I'm done leveling up here. Technically, I should... Uh, no, again, I, I don't need to worry about it. One thing that you do need to keep in mind is that, to my knowledge, and I think we've, we've seen that happen, actually... Um, if you pay a trainer for the extra points before reaching 10 naturally via uh, putting skill points into a skill, you will not be able to train past 10. 10 is still the cap. But if you train to 10 uh, through skill points, you can then edit, uh, you, you can then increase the skill to uh, up to 12 with a trainer's help. So that's kind of weird and honestly a pretty bad decision to design it that way. To not uh, consider those two bonus points just, you know, additional to your regular points, but, well, that's how it works. Apparently I've been lucky or smart enough to not let that become a problem. Also, of course, he's currently using a weapon that does increase his weapon skills to the point, um, or past the point of 16, which gives Adrenaline Rush, which, in my opinion, is the most desirable of the higher level weapon skills. I don't, I'm not really too interested in the super high level stuff, like, I guess the one that that allows you to uh, become battle frenzied at will is decent, but we do have our speed elixirs and haste spell for that, so it's not really that required, because it does add up, uh, it does uh, eat up one of your uh, skill uses, of course, and puts everything else on cooldown, so it does limit you in, in a different way. I feel that uh, the thing that allows you to have a ton of... Uh, a ton of action points for one round is really the most useful. Anyway, so uh, either way, he's he's past that point. But just in case he ever wants to get rid of that weapon, I would like to increase his uh, total weapon skills to 16 naturally, so that he always has access to that. And to that end, I would like to find a melee weapon trainer. 
And as I said, I'm gonna just look it up. For now, I'm going to increase his hardiness, I guess, and lethal blow. And he does get two traits for one final time. That's good to know. Mm. That being said, I could increase challenger, but again, we've we've been doing fine without it so far. Uh, strong back, no, definitely not needed. Quick learning, <laughs> definitely not needed. Mm, fast recovery, I mean, sure. No, wait, I, I don't know why I keep thinking that this is uh, skill uh, cooldown recovery. It's not. Yeah, no. Well, I guess in that case, we'll just increase his strength. I suppose? Sure. Twice. There we go. Okay, as for you... Yeah, he's at 13. So next level up, he'll get to 14. And assuming I have not found and paid the trainer for two additional levels, which I don't think I have. I'm pretty sure I've uh, been very evenly giving them both their points. And... Yeah... So I'm, I'm pretty sure that neither of them have increased their base skills via trainer. So I'm gonna, so he's gonna reach 14 uh, on his final real reg uh, regular level up. If I put one more point into it, and I should reach 16 if and when I find a trainer. So that's that. He's also really close to leveling up, which I might just want to do. Just find some random combats. I mean. Uh, that's 38 experience. Should still be pretty fast. Anyway, okay. I've sp spent way too much time considering this kind of th kind of stuff. Actually, he's probably gonna level up from visiting the castle, which I could have teleported to, but uh, yes, okay, whatever. Oh, also, um, no, it's fine. No shopping, please. We do still have the uh, Wounded Soldier quest, and we have the, um, where is it, help, Barbaric Sylphs, right there. Which I uh, suspect might also uh, require the um, piece of Greymold Salve, which we have one of currently. There should be a way to make more, and I might have even found the Alchemist in question and just forgot about it. I think right right now, because we're here, and because it's also, you know, role-playing-wise, the more urgent thing, I'm gonna see if I can give him the grim old self, and I can. Okay, cool. Oh, I don't know, it, it seemed kind of obvious. I really couldn't think of anything else that might that we might be able to do to help a wounded person, so... Yeah. Brian winces as you apply the Greymold self to his wounds, but he doesn't object. Sure enough, the legendary healing power of, the con of this concoction starts to work. His pain decreases, his breathing becomes smooth, and color returns to his cheeks. Wow, he says. That stuff is great. I think I'll be able to return to the field in no time. Yeah, awesome. Great idea. Get yourself wounded or even killed as soon as possible. Uh, how'd you wind up like this? Didn't we ask him this before? Uh, Scree Caves. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we've heard about this. Empire Soldiers. They're all dead now, yes. One of them got me across the ribs with a sword. Oh, those that attacked him are dead, yes. And everyone else in the Scree Caves as well. Oh yeah, he, he saw Bonatai. Okay, we know all that. Right. And the quest we got from someone. Theresa. Okay. Was she one of the people in here? Buck Tessa. That's not Theresa. Oh, this is just a morgue. What? Silverio? Silverio? Eustace? This is just... the general. Alright. In here? Nope. Hmm. Is she out here now? Landron? Um, oh no, Landron is outside. Well, just <laughs> running out of 
Running out of options, and there she is. Hello, Theresa. Uh, I healed Brian for you. He should be better now. Uh, well, for now. Okay, nice. Reputation improved, experience. Cool. Theresa looks, if anything, even angrier. I know, and he's already wanting to go out and fight again. I think this time I'll lose him for sure. She looks away. I'm sorry. I appreciate what you did. I know we need to fight for our Vernon, but it... It just makes me angry sometimes. I want a little time to be happy. You've made it possible, but I don't see it happening for a long time. Yeah, I I can understand how she feels, honestly. Ideally, though, this whole war situation should not be... Should not last that much longer, if we have any say in it, and we're hard at work trying to end it. I mean, apart from the fact that we're just doing all kinds of random side stuff instead. But, you know, technically speaking, we're we're trying to help. How's uh, Brian doing? Getting better faster and ready to go out and get killed. Why am I bothering with a soldier? I'm a fool, she sighs. <sighs> I really appreciate what you did, but it's difficult. Yep. Well, okay, that was not a level up, but he should be, like, super close. Yeah, 12 points. Maybe I'll actually look for some kind of random encounter. But, you know, as I said, I I just want to know. I'm not sure if I'm going to go hunt down that trainer if, if he exists. But I at least want to know if that's the case and where they are and whatnot. So I'm going to look that up real quick. Okay. So it turns out a pole weapon trainer exists and is available to me. In fact, he's in Silvar, which makes me wonder if I haven't actually um, bought those, uh, bought that training already, since I've obviously seen that person. Uh, it was the uh, Slith Weapon Master. What am I doing here? Alright, oh, I want to quickly go talk to the king. So yeah, I'll, I'll teleport to Silbar from here and check that real in just a moment. There we go, level up. You report to King Micah and tell him about the proclamation you saw on Darmon. Ah, I had hopes that would attract adventurers not already known to us. Whoops. Oh well, you're still very welcome here. Avernum can use your help. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could have put that in the proclamation that people who are already working for Avernum do not need to uh, to report here. This is not where I want to go. Although, do I have magical stuff? No. Uh, no, uh, rather, not magical stuff, but... Ah, uh, what's the word? Empire Records. Yes. Uh, Silvar. So yeah, uh, pull weapons trainer is here. Um, actually, we only have 1,600 coins. <laughs> that uh, I'm well. We're gonna see if that's enough. Although I have some stuff to sell, so which I could just do. Uh, sell something. Oh, 5,000. Yeah, that should definitely be enough for two bits of training. Hello, Oz S. You're exactly who I'm looking for. Um, so, I'd like some training. Yes, pull weapons. And he can indeed learn more. Right, and it doesn't matter if I train it now because the skill goes up to, I don't know, if there even is a cap. So, yeah. Just making sure he's the right character. 1400. It, it's a bit of money right now, but, you know, definitely worth it. And the um, melee weapon trainer also exists, but he's a Vanatai who apparently wants me to rescue one of the crystal souls first, so I can't quite do that yet. You get that. 16, there we go. And I could max out quick action. I think I want more lethal blow. Just because. Trains available. Um, parry mastery. I could increase parry mastery. He has already picked endurance. Hmm. Well, as a non-human, he has significantly less traits than his warrior colleague, but it's what it is. Yeah, repose mastery doesn't seem worth it. Maybe I should just give him a, an extra point of strength. I don't know. I think since I already put one point into parry mastery, I'm gonna put another one. Alrighty, and yes, he does now have access to Adrenaline Rush and Blade Shield, even. Well, uh, I'm gonna put Adrenaline Rush here, just so they have it both in the same position, and I really don't need Flawless Shot. So I'm gonna put the Mighty Blow there, for what it's worth. Yeah. 
Uh, slightly different setup, but I guess that should be fine. Okay, that's that. Um, lab equipment, right. We're still looking for a mortar and pestle, which I should probably be able to just pick up somewhere. There must be so many just lying around in random places. Or I could buy one from some kind of general store, but I don't know. I'm just going to wait until I come across that stuff naturally. Uh, Rebels Crafts. I guess I could... Ah, dang. I, I should have looked up where to find... Where to where to craft uh, Greymold Self. I mean, I guess I could check the uh, alchemist that I've already found for Mello. Almaria. You know what? Uh, since I still have this, the website open, I'm just going to look that up real quick. Okay, and uh, Rosemary is supposed to make that if we have the recipe, and I think we do. So why don't I teleport to Almaria real quick? Uh, Pylon is over here. All right, Almaria, Rosemary's. Where exactly? Oh, Apothecary, okay. That should do the trick. Hello. Uh, I'd like you to make a potion for me. Graymold cell, okay. For one Graymold. That's straightforward. I guess I'll make... I mean, I'm not sure if I need two, or if I even need one for the Sliths. That's the only thing I can think of, though. It's not really clear, but they, they seem... I guess they were described, described as sickly, or... I don't know. Chances are they don't they don't even want gray mold, but I'm just going to I guess I'm just just going to make this one. And I can always return. It's not like I know that I need the gray mold for anything else and I'm am accumulating quite a few of those, but you know. Anyway. I suppose I'll visit those slips real quick just to confirm one way or the other. <laughs> in before they need in before they want two or three, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they will, but that would be funny. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and make a cut and uh, row over there. So I'll see you in a second. And here we are. Approach and talk to them. Uh, let's see how they're described again. Miserable existence. Don't even have any huts. Looks like they have been struggling to build stone huts. Pitiful parts of scree littered about testify to the lack of success. Hmm talk to them. You approach and try to speak with them. Unfortunately, they aren't hostile. Unfortunately, you can't understand their crude gibbering. The leader points at the piles of rocks and says something to you. Then he holds his hand out. He seems to want something, but you aren't sure what. Ah, God damn it. So they're not sick. Okay, well. It's good to know that, but what could they possibly want? Points at the rocks. Does he want some kind of rock? Something that would help them build stuff? Maybe some kind of tool? I don't know. I guess I'll... I might have to look this up. Hmm. Maybe they want tools, but... What kind, and how many, I... I don't know. It seems very unclear. It might be something completely different, too, that I just can't think of right now. I don't know. I feel like, just like with those uh, Borgia mushrooms, it might be something that... Yeah, I don't. I don't even know. I guess with it's a different issue with mushrooms. In that case, I might have just been where those mushrooms are, and would normally never check that particular place again. And with the slits, I just simply don't know what they're what they're looking for. I don't know. It, it always feels lame to look this that kind of thing up, but you know, there are also super minor quests that I wouldn't that I shouldn't have to worry about at all. But you know. Being the completionist that I am, I can't just leave a quest unfulfilled. It's uh, simply impossible. I mean, I could look it up right now, but I kind of also want to move on, honestly. I have this grim old self. I guess, I don't know. Might be used for something else later. It's good to have it either way. Hello. How did I miss that thing? Healing elixir. Cool. Hmm. Well... Yeah, uh, so I'm going to head for the formerly unexplored tunnels. Fort Remote. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. This doesn't look very um, intact. Hello. Is this really f Fort Remote? Is this currently inhabited? Because if if so, there are some Aranea here. It's very, very close. You find the remains of a ruined building. It was destroyed by several large fiery impacts probably a few years ago. It is dotted with moss and lichen. This must be one of the few remaining sections of the first Fort Remote. The fort was destroyed several years ago by a horde of demons created by the evil Lord Grahoth. Grahoth was slain by a band of legendary heroes not long after the destruction of Fort Remote. The fort was rebuilt not long after. Indeed. Um, good. Well, um, I'm not buffed, but Arania Sears aren't very dangerous. So there's that. Okay, there are a couple more and I was being dumb, which typically doesn't help, but in this case also doesn't hurt too much. Should be able to blast them all from here. Maybe even kill them. Yep, okay, that's what I thought. Get another Arania uh, Fang for what it's worth. 21 of those, and nothing to do with them. Okay, nothing to pick up here. Huh. Uh, hello, Ang Angarahad? Angarahad? That's an interesting name. Were you aware that you were, I don't know, fishing, I guess? Like, 20 meters away from a couple of hostile giant spiders? Hmm. Maybe better not to tell her. There's a lovely young woman sitting below the tree, fishing. Tree? Okay. Uh, what passes for a tree down here, I guess. Uh, the two pools by Fort Remote have been stocked with fat cavefish, a useful source of slimy, unappealing meat. She doesn't get up when you approach, but she does nod and smile. I'm angry ahead. The quartermaster here. I'm on my break, though. Sit and relax. Okay. Uh, why are you sitting out here? Or sitting out here, I guess. I'm taking my break before returning to my toil. Do you get many breaks? In a place like this, you need to rest when you can. You can go a week without seeing a single foe, and then it'll be non-stop fighting for two weeks. You grab quiet when you can. Fair enough. Uh, how is it How is it your toil, then? What? How is it you, you toil, then, in Fort Remote? I see. I'm the quartermaster. I get the supplies from Darman. Keep the weapons sharp. That sort of thing. Do you get enough supplies? Huh. Very likely. Ah, uh, barely. The Rakshasi keep killing off the merchants. Well, there are a couple less of them now. Maybe even none at all left. Uh, who are the Rakshasi? Magical cat people. A bunch of them came from the surface with the Empire, attracted to easy prey and easy loot. There is a fortress full of them to the east. Yeah, I guess that that one's gone. Um, fortunately, they don't come here, so you're safe from them now. Right. Uh, just be careful when you head east. Mm, are you looking for anything in particular? Apparently so. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked that, Traveler. We get much of what we need with barter. I have a line on a bunch of quality bows from Patrick's Tower. Okay. Didn't know they were making bows. But they want scrolls on magic in return. Scrolls on magic. Okay. Uh, if you can bring me something like that, I'll give you a price. Right. Papers. Wait, papers? I'm assuming she, she looks she's looking for, the, for those uh, magical research notes. And not just paper. Because that would suck. Um, well, uh, why don't they just give you the bows? Pfft, I mean, why would they? I, I guess they could ask for money in return, instead of something more specific. <sighs> Your naivete is so sweet. Nobody gives anything for free, even when we're on the same side. Yeah, well, I wasn't talking about for free, and uh, never mind. Uh, I have some papers for you, apparently. Uh, whoa, 2400 coins. I mean, I, I don't know how many of those notes I had. But I, I'm pretty sure I had a lot, yeah. Okay. Also, oh, rune plate. And a lot of experience. Since you have been such a help, a commander, the commander has authorized me to give a special reward. Oh. Wait, so is there now? Hmm. It doesn't say that the quest has been completed. So I guess it's still in my, in my quest log for more, to be able to turn in more of those. But maybe you do get uh, special rewards for turning in a certain number of all those collection items now. Hmm. In that, well, I guess it's a little bit too late to start collecting those iron bars now that I've been neglecting to turn in and possibly some other items for similar quests. Oh well. 
We did get a magical uh, chest armor, though, which we have not been finding a lot of so far, so that's that might be good. Uh, yeah, I don't have any papers left, of course, since I just gave you everything I had. Um, okay. Yep, that was a lot of experience, too, for this kind of quest. Uh, rune plate... Magic... Oh! Magical damage. Does it... Wait. This does not encumber mages? Holy crap, that's amazing. 34 armor? Plus evasion, plus mind effect resistance, which, of course, a mage doesn't really need. Magical damage. Wow. Uh, whoops. Let's see. Yeah, I'm... I don't know, my mind is kind of blown here. No encumbrance. I mean, that's awesome even for, for fighters, to be honest. Um, the armor is great. Uh, no match, uh, mage spells, spellcraft, magical efficiency. Those are all good. Probably com better combined than the 5% magical damage. And she does not need the mind effect resistance at all. The armor is really nice, though. Um, what? Didn't mean to give it to you here. Rune plate. Um, well, the Dead Eye Chainmail is, of course, a sniper thing. Huh. I mean, what are you using? The Blessed Breastplate. That gives you a, just a minus 20% to hit chance. And nothing else. Energy resistance, hostile effect resistance, 20% armor. Wow. I mean, okay, this one already gives 34% armor. This one does not. Hmm. Would I exchange the 12% energy resistance, 6% 6 hostile effect resistance for 20% mind effect resistance? I mean, probably, yeah. Or I could give that one to Svafnir. I mean, ultimately, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. I think as nice as it is that my mages, or especially in particular my, my mage, could use this. My priest could use it, of course, without having to worry about the um, um, the encumbrance. But I think I want to give this to my warriors. Again, the magical damage doesn't help, but everything else is so nice. Yeah. That does increase your mental resistance to 63. Versus... 56. It's not that great an increase because it's a percentage of your current, of his current uh, resistance. And not just a flat 20% increase, which would be absolutely overpowered, of course. But it's still, still very decent. Hmm. Oh, he has less metal resistance. So he would benefit from it more. I don't know, it's a tough one. I'll give this to you. Do I want to give this to him? It does give an even bigger penalty. Of course, he has less of a problem with the hit penalty than the dual wielder. Oh man, this is... Uh, this is tough. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if I want to use this. Physical armor. He still has more. Yeah, I mean, okay. He has not gained any physical armor, of course. He has 82%. With this, it would be 85%. That hardly makes a difference. And he does lose out on... Um, wait. Magic? Is it is it magic? Hold on. There's not a not a lightning damage stat. Magic seventy three. Energy mining. Seventy seven. Yeah. Okay. Weird. What? Don't they call it energy? On the character sheet. <laughs> ah, another one of those weird quirks of of the Abaddon engine. Oh well. Not Abaddon. Avernum. Same thing. Uh, I, th I don't know. I think I want to keep this thing and wait for another 
for another magical magical armor that gives both lots of armor and some kind of magical resistance too. Uh, I'll take these fish, by the way. Thank you. Okay, that was another... I don't know. Um, that was more time spent on something that shouldn't have taken that long, or at least not on camera, but... Yeah, sorry. Is there something in here? There certainly is. Uh, mountains, and we have a body that was walled in here. Okay. I'll take it. What was that? Did we get some kind of mes mes message? The sign says, in, in memory of the bold defenders of the last Fort Remote who died fighting evil, they will always be remembered. Always. Fort Remote, version 2.0. Okay. Nice. Right, yeah, this used to be just a corridor, basically. It's really still a very small fortress. Oops. Combat, please. Crude javelins. Oh, steel javelins. Actually, lots of stuff to sell. I mean, if you guys don't want it. Please don't mind me picking up the stuff. Alright. You immediately note that Fort Remote has no guards looking east. All of their limited resources are devoted to watching the ambushes, uh, four ambushes from the west. Right. Which makes perfect sense. Guest quarters. Uh, okay, I guess guest quarters are over here. Hello, Mother Madge. There is a priestess resting in this hall, quietly meditating and recovering her power before the next attack. Most of the fortresses in Avernum have a healer stationed there, and she must be Fort Remotes. She sits with her eyes closed, praying silently to herself. When she opens them, she seems agitated. I am Mother Madge. Uh, is all well with you? I thought she was agitated because we intruded. Perhaps soon. Right now I am preparing myself. People here need my protection. How do you prepare yourself? I am storing my energies. Should we be attacked, and we will be, my energy will be all that stands between our wounded and death. What sort of attack do you anticipate? We don't know what manner of bizarre creature will come from the, from the west next. Demons? Undead? Mutant giants? We don't know, and we prepare the best we can. Um, heal me. I mean, we don't need that. You look well. I must conserve my power for those under my care. Right. Uh, can you teach me any spells? I lack the power of... or time, I'm sorry. Ask in the shrine in Darmon. In Darmon? Wait. Did they... Offer to teach me? I'm not sure. Uh, you are the priestess of Fort Remote? I mean, yeah? Yes, I look after the poor soldiers stationed here. And I look after the shrine. Is it difficult to look after it? Um, apparently so. Not really, but it's not complete. The Ankh, the symbol of healing and life for the altar, is a crude and crumbling thing. I wish I had a better symbol for it. But there is none to be found, and there are no resources to forge a new one. Uh, no more... No more info on how how to where to find one. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, replace Ankh. Someone will replace the Ankh stolen from stolen from their shrine. What? That's not what she told me. Perhaps a ruin somewhere in Avernum will have a decent replacement. A ruin somewhere in Avernum. That's very vague. Vague. Very vague. Although, now that I think about it. I might have come across a ruined church, ruined shrine somewhere that actually did have an Ankh. Or did I already pick that up? I found a nice Ankh. Oh, apparently. Well, that's convenient. Excellent. I will give you the honor of placing it onto the altar. Okay, awesome. Huh. <laughs> yeah, bronze Ankh, indeed. Beautiful and, cr and carefully made. Touching it makes you feel warm and happy. That sounds good. Huh. Uh, several comfortable unused beds. I mean, yeah, it's it's nice, you know, for role-playing reasons, but obviously as soon as you enter here, you're already fully healed. I guess technically you could be hurt from fighting these Arania, but... Uh, yeah. It is customary for Evernight Forts to have a small shrine. This one, as usual, shows signs of frequent visitation. A bowl of fresh mushrooms has been placed in front of it as an offering. The ankh on the, on the altar is of crude granite. It's very ugly. You suddenly have an intense urge to replace the stone ankh with the bronze ankh you found in the north. 
somewhere. Uh, place it. With a feeling of great satisfaction, you replace the crude stone ark with a much more beautiful bronze one. It's strange how overpowering the desire to leave the ark here was. You feel much better now that you've satisfied it. As you turn to leave, you would swear you would swear the bronze ankh flashes brightly. You feel warm for a moment. You turn to look at it, but it it looks just like it did before. Odd. Must have been your imagination. Hmm. Okay, Miri leveled up. Uh, she, of course, gets more intelligence and more intelligence only. And I'm gonna... What? Oh, I can't. Yeah, that's right. Can I... Wait. Hold on a sec. Yeah, because of this stupid, the stupid way this works, I if I had not bought hardiness by uh, from a trainer, I could have increased it by two extra points. I think, well, at least two. This level up and the previous one, maybe even the one before that. I'm not sure how how long this has been the case, but yeah, that's really annoying. Um, I guess in that case, oh yeah, I I guess. And of course, I can still only put one point into resistance. Oh well, there we go. More mage skills for some extra damage, mana. I don't know. Uh, intelligence. Oh right, uh, we want one extra level of sword mage, just because. I think one level should be enough. I hope. And then we increase her intelligence more. Question mark. Yeah, it's hardly worth. Putting, starting to put points into summoning focus now. Back, yeah, no, perfect health. Uh, I could increase her health. Hmm, is that better? Uh, I guess we'll see how much that does, right? No, we don't. Not immediately. Three percent. So that should be six, seven health, maybe. Uh, wait, am I dumb? 3%? Yeah, no. Something like that. So, technically a little bit better than one point of endurance, for example. I could increase her intelligence more, but, you know. Let's give her a bit more health. So, right now, 247, and now she has 255. I guess it's uh, combined with what she got for leveling up, but, you know, it's nice to have. A little bit extra health. So. I placed a new Ankh on your altar. You did? She grins. Marvelous. We are Fort Remote, thank you. It is a small comfort, but only small comforts are available to us now. Right. Uh, do we... Not get anything for telling her? Hmm, okay. Fair enough. I guess we did get our reward immediately upon placing it. So there's that. What is this? A storeroom. Okay. Which is being guarded from the inside. Makes sense. Uh, Deltarian. First you notice the long steel blade, wickedly sharp and polished to a shine. The next thing you notice is the man cleaning it. He is short, muscular, and shrouded in grey garments. They blend easily into the stone around him. He gives you a momentary gra glance and returns to his work. I'm Blade Master Deltarian. What is it that a Blade Master does exactly? Master blades? Obviously. Duh. Right now, sharpening my sword. Uh, do you attend to your blade often? Every day that it has been drawn forth from its sheath. That was what Master Kevtar told me to do. Always keep my blade sharp and clean. Kevtar? I've heard that name recently, but I'm not entirely sure where or in what context. Who is Master Kevtar? The finest bladesman I've ever had the pleasure to know. A sad story, really. He finally tired of the bloodshed and retired. Oh, wait, no. Isn't is that that guy living north of here in his hut? I think that might be him. Retired, but we are at war. Hmm. He has done more uh, more than his share of killing Empire warriors. He lives in solitude now, hidden away in the ruins, not far to the north. I will go visit him soon. He taught me well, and I owe him that much. Does he still teach? He's a solitary man, but he often welcomes visitors and potential students. He sometimes even teaches those with the willingness to learn and the money to pay. Yeah. Primarily the letter. Can I find him? I don't see why not. You find for Avernum. I think he would be happy to teach you. In fact, he already has, but just uh, for completeness's sake, go north to, to the ruins a few miles away and look around. If and look around, if you're persistent, I'm sure you can locate him. 
He turns away a tiny amount, barely perceptible, and yet enough to clearly convey that the conversation is done. Alright, fair enough. Oops, I oh, didn't mean to talk to you. Hello, Freitas. There's a wrinkled, withered wizard here, reading rituals from a dog-eared spellbook. When you approach, he closes the book and looks up at you. Greetings, adventurers, for I can tell from your look that that is what you must be. I am Freitas. Uh, what is it you are studying? I am preparing spells of defense. What sort of spells do you use? Nothing complicated. Mass hastes. Yep, I'm, ver I'm a big fan of those. Strength spells and such. Things for when the Empire attacks. So you, ex you expect an attack then? They've been pretty quiet co uh, recently, but you never know. This fort is well defended enough to withstand their assaults, especially because of the runes. Tell me more about the runes. The outer wall is supplemented with, with runes enchanted with powerful defensive magic. I helped create them. When we wish, anything near them is blasted to dust. Our walls are magically hardened as well. This fort can fall, but it will take a mighty blow to defeat it. Hmm. Let's hope it doesn't come. Uh, before I've dealt with the Empire Presence in the remote caves. Um, how long have you been stationed here? Only a few months. I asked to be sent here. It's one of the few forts in Avernum I had not seen in my decades fighting for our land. What do you think? It is small and boring. I hope that I die somewhere more pleasant. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's a, an understandable wish. Uh, I need to find a wizard named Thompson, that's right. Uh, have you seen him? Although I'm pretty sure Freitas is not the one I was supposed to ask. Or was he? Maybe he was. Uh, Freitas looks startled. He looks around, then bends close to you. Yes, he came here. He's in hiding in the tunnels below. He is convinced that the Empire wishes to destroy him. He came here one night, and the next morning he disappeared. Before he was gone, though, he told me the secret of, fi of his hiding place, should someone need to find him. Okay, uh, I definitely need to see him. He said that to find him you must look behind the painting in the eastern guest room. Press the button there and you can enter his chambers. Take note of this. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> can you teach me any magic? He laughs mirthlessly. Oh, you're adventurous. You're adventurous, all right. Always looking for advantage where you can get it. I mean, can you blame me? But I must disappoint you. I'm not a teaching mage. I don't have the knack. Right. Okay, eastern guest room. Um, not there. Wait, Eastern Guest Room? Oh, so it must be this one. Yeah, of course, because this is north. Um, uh, more. Hello. You encounter a rare sight. It's a Nethil in an Evernight Fortress, wearing an immaculately clean apron. He bows to you. I am more. Uh, are you employed at this fort? Or just hanging around here? Mor, I'm honored to do the cooking for this fort. How did you wind up being the cook here? He makes a soft purring noise. This is where I ended up. I wanted to leave my people, to do travel, you see. Where have you traveled? I wanted to see this land. I traveled this great cave everywhere, but with the battles I needed a place to stop. I ended here, where I learned employing. Where I earned employing. He gives you a proud, toothy grin. Hmm. You mean employment as the fort chef? Yes, it is strange working for human tastes. I do fine. Uh, what? It is strange working for human tastes? I do fine. Okay, that's a sentence. Though sometimes people are joking. How do people joke with you? They say I like wanting to put rats in this stew, but I would not do that. The rats here are no good. In are not good enough. You can't tell whether he's. <laughs> the, the rats here are not good enough. You can't tell whether he's joking or not. You decide not to think about it. I mean, what's so bad about eating rats? Honestly, especially when they're giant rats. Um. Well. Well, rats aren't exactly a human delicacy. They. Kind of should be down here, honestly. If the alternative is sickly cow meat, I guess the rats seem in generally seem healthier than the other livestock around. So that we should really consider that. Anyway, I would not serve rats to humans. They would not be liking them, and I want all of them to myself. He purrs hungrily. Well, see, he knows what's good. Um, it is good to meet another Nephil fighting for Avernum. Our kind has no happy history with the humans of Avernum. We have, a, we have a sad war for many years. But our kind, we know that the Empire is the true enemy. The one that will kill us all without guilt. Right. That's nice talking to you. Um, and nice taking this bolt of cloth. Don't mind me. Some barracks. And... Oh, Commander Lori. Right. I didn't even 
think about that, but of course, a fort should have a commander somewhere. You meet a middle-aged woman with very long, very curly scarlet hair. She is studying maps at her desk. She looks up and gives you a grim smile. I am Commander Lori, daughter of Rourke. Uh, yeah, we we met a Rourke in the first game. Was he the commander here? Hmm. Welcome to Fort Remote, soldier. You note that she is dressed in simple white robes, with the symbol of a commander embroidered on the shoulder. Are you the commander of this fort? Yes, as my father was before me. I see. I organize our defenses and prepare for Empire attacks, of which there are no shortage. May I ask what happened to your father? My father was slain when a horde of demons destroyed the old fort remote. You can still find the old fort's ruins just to the east. When he died, I joined the army and rose up to his position. Then I took his place. She looks down at her unusual garb and smiles. As you can see, I've made my way in my own style. I take it that you don't care for uniforms. I don't like uniforms, and I don't like uniform thinking. The Empire's forces in this area are unusual, and this fort needs to be unusual to deal with them. Happily, we, we Evernites are granted a lot of freedom to do what is best. The enemy forts are unusual in one way. There are two large Empire outposts to the west, Gothar and Angirak. They are unusual places, each in its own way. What is Kothar like? Kothar is a site of magic and magical experimentation. Strange creatures come from there, including huge, amazingly strong mutant giants. Not the sort of thing an ordinary soldier has to deal with. What's so unique about Angirak? A huge fort, black stone, black magic. We know nothing about what goes, in, what goes on inside, except that prisoners that go in never come out, and it gives our priests splitting headaches to just go near the place. Oh, I hope we'll be fine then. There's a huge gate blocking access, and we can't get anyone through it. I suggest against a frontal attack, unless you want to die. Okay, I'll think about that. I suppose I wanted to get into Angirek. How could I do it? Hmm, a tough one. I've heard rumors that the Tower of Magi has a huge teleporter. That's all I should say, though. I'm not supposed to talk about it much. Yeah, we know all about it. Um, anything else we uh, to the west that I should know about? There was a dragon out there, in name of Sulphurus. Powerful, but not openly hostile. She left us alone. We left her alone. But with the Empire out there, running around, who knows what's happened to her, if she's still alive. Right. Uh, how are the defenses of Fort Remote? They are much better now than they, have been, uh, than they were when this fort was destroyed. They have to be. Never a shortage of raids. There are a lot of Empire raids. They haven't attacked in a while, which is strange, since while the Emperor doesn't have many troops to the west, if they broke past us, they could run wild through the Great Cave. So I'm preparing our defenses and looking for opportunities to attack. That reminds me, I'm always looking for adventurers to go on missions. Hint, hint. Um, why are you unarmed? Why are we asking this question now? Hm. I'm not unarmed. My strength is in magic, not steel. Don't worry on my account. Okay. Uh, most commanders are looking to hire adventurers. How about you? I am. The Empire can get small groups past us. We don't know how. We, in turn, want to send spies west. To do this, I need to see a blue pass so I can make forgeries. Bring one to me and I will try to earn you a promotion at the castle. Where might I look for one? I'm aware that the Empire is building a new fort northwest of Fort Emerald. Perhaps you may have luck there. Okay. Perhaps I already have one. Or several. I found a blue pass. You give her your blue pass. This is not your only pass, yes? Nope. You say that you have another. Thank you very much. I will send word to the castle of what you have done for us. Hopefully they will reward you with a higher clearance. Higher than crown clearance? Okay. I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop referring to that. Um, well, uh, I was kind of hoping for something more. Something to do with attacking one of the forts in the western tunnels. But, oh well. I guess no such luck. Among the books on the shelf, you find a map and notes describing the fortress Kothar. It is at the southwest corner of the tunnels to the west. The maps note several Empire guard posts between here and there. Okay. One of the folders on these shelves catches your eye. It describes the fortress Angirak, which is to the west and then north. It is a place filled with evil magic. Little else is known about it. Alrighty. Well then, let's uh, head over here. Head over here. Hello. Something's blocking my way. Oh, stupid NPCs. What are you doing there? Why are you... Okay. Wow. <sighs> so, by the pint... Pinting? Painting? Wait, oh, wait, just... That may be the first time I've ever seen an interactive, like, clickable object that's non-standard. It's not 
one of your normal containers or buttons on the wall. Interesting. So the engine supports that, I guess. Support Maybe supports making any sprite clickable, interactable. Hmm. This must be the painting Fred has told you about. Look behind it and, as promised, find a button. Push the button. You press the button and the wall to the south slides out of your way. All right. And indeed, there is an underground section here. This massive gate is closed and locked, and the keyhole is surrounded by runes. You try your keys and find that the key you found in the ruins west of Formello, like, ages ago. Literal centuries ago. Uh, unlocks the door. Cool. I should probably also save the game. Just in case, yeah. Why? <sighs> isn't, isn't the a locked gate protection enough? Do I really have to deal with this kind of nonsense? Especially since this seems very easy. To navigate? Oh wait, we probably need to step on that to open it. Uh, okay. Thankfully, wait. Okay. Maybe I should just look before I move. Uh, why did you step on that? Okay, that worked. I don't know, I assume something bad happens as soon as we step on one of these. Maybe it, it closes the gate again after opening it. This looks like it's gonna have something nasty in it. Or not. Weird. Okay. Any switches on the walls? No? You enter a small garden full of healthy, delicious mushrooms. There is a closed gate in the far wall. There are several stone tiles... Uh, stone tiled squares set on the floor, each etched with a rune. When you enter, the westernmost rune shimmers slightly. Does it? The westernmost one. So this one. Uh, does that mean we want to step on that? I mean, there's not much we can do apart from doing that. When you pass, some spores fly off the plants around you. You feel very f fuzzy headed. Okay. Wait. I assume we don't want to step on the mushrooms. Hmm. Oh boy. Uh, okay, now I can't click there, unfortunately. If I, if I click here, he's probably going to walk across the mushrooms. Uh, that's stupid. Okay, well. There's really not much I can do. So I guess I'll just... Uh, do this. You feel very confused, so much so that you barely notice that all the plants around you have started to move. Oh. But the gate also opened, so maybe this... This is what it was supposed to do? Yeah, of course, because now we're... Wait. Okay, full. <laughs> For a second there, I thought we were all uh, out of health, and this was... We were all at one hit point or something? Okay. No, but we were completely debuffed. Uh, worst of it is that we're... Uh, that we can't cast spells. I can use... Purging Crystal. That did not do anything. Really? Are these all... Are none of these hostile effects? Huh? Okay. Well, let's use one of these then. <laughs> For what it's worth. Can you use something useful? Not really. I guess we can try the acid shower, although they might be immune to nature damage. Yep. Of course. Cool. Uh, lightning? <laughs> sure. So all we can hope for is that... Wait. How's this gonna work? Okay, nullity is not gonna run out, basically. None of these are. What? This is bad. I mean, slow is not so bad. Uh, actually... Okay, we, we can attack. We just... Yeah, we're gonna be unable to move for quite some time. What? Oh, okay, nullity prevents you from even using combat skills. 
Wow. 90% and I just missed. Okay, so that was simply unlucky. Man, this sucks. This <laughs> sucks really hard. Uh, recovery? I'm assuming this works no better than the Persian Crystal. Oh, wait, it does. It removed some of the effects. Hmm. Not the Nology, of course. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just shoot this guy, I guess. Oh, wow. They don't... They do not have that much health if we get to finally attack them. I mean, is there a smarter way to, to deal with this fight? Because this seems silly and not like the intended method. It seems like I did something wrong and get I'm, I'm getting punished here. I don't know. I should have tried using uh purging thing again. Yeah, she really can't do much. Hmm. I do need to use some kind of healing next turn. And yeah, he can't really do anything. You could try a curing potion. Or actually, oh, he, yeah, I was going to say he can use his um, focus mind or whatever that skill is called that gets rid of uh, negative effects, but yeah, novelty field, God damn it. Uh, take a potion, I guess? Wait, what? Oh, is, why did I think it was Swafni's turn? I'm such an idiot. Okay, whatever. Yeah, take a potion now and attack and hope that you don't die. Okay, did not die. So use another one of these. That got rid of uh, a couple more effects, but not nullity. Maybe that just can't be cured that way? I don't know. Still not dead. Nope. I should have healed her. I'm dumb. I even said it last time. Yeah, I don't know. This is uh, a strange fight. It certainly feels like I'm not doing it right, but... Oh well. I mean... Okay, uh, I, I could be using... I could be doing... things. Specifically, I could have used a... Um, speed burst scroll. Because instead I'll do something else. Uh, I'm gonna use one more. No, okay. It, it seems like either they they get taken away in order of of application, the most recent one first, and since we or or uh, the most rather the oldest one first. And this might be the most recent one. Although it seems like uh, the duration has actually been reduced quite significantly, so... Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how this works. Anyway, group heal, I guess. That did not do a whole lot. You use another one. You can't use anything else, right? Spell word. It's not gonna help. I guess I could be using some of these. Inferno Wand. Okay, that's actually decent damage for... for a uh, rod. I mean, okay. I want to check this. Uh, 5, 9, 12. Maybe this reduces the duration? No, not at all. Okay. <sighs> I really don't want to use a speed burst scroll, though. That's the thing. I mean, we're killing them, slowly but surely. There. Uh, you're... You just killed yourself. Wonderful. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, really? Not even. Oh, okay. No! <laughs> of course. What else do we have? Um, corruption baton? That is lightning damage, energy damage. It's also a cone shaped, of course. Well, we can do this at least to kill this one. Wow, that's not a lot of damage. Hmm. Terror wand? Huh, <laughs> I mean, I can try. Yeah, I guess they all resisted. I mean, she's kind of useless. Although, she's become she's going to going to become much more useful next turn. Um, shoot that guy, I suppose. She can cast spells. Uh, she should probably also use a potion because she's gonna die. Man, this was. A really nasty fight. Okay, it's probably good that he missed, honestly. Hmm. Take one step away. Ah. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna cast a spell now instead of wasting more action points, although I guess it didn't really matter. Yeah, don't attack a second time, you attack this guy. <sighs> of course. Should kill this guy, hopefully. Oh, both. Awesome. Wow, that was absolutely horrible. And again, probably did it wrong. But, oh well. I'll pick up these, uh, we'll resurrect real quick. Man, uh, heal. I said heal. Oh, he's... What? Wait. He was able to resurrect, but not able to heal? How does that work? That's weird. We also don't have any buffs active. Like, any permanent buffs. Uh, that would have helped a little bit, I guess. Well... If nothing else, we ended up using some of our uh, more or less useless um, consumables. Also, Thompson is here. And we're also at way over an hour, so I guess I'm going to make a cut here. We're going to talk to this guy next time and ask him about ask him what the heck this was all about. Yeah. Um, for the time being, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment. And I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.